And so I perhaps treat it as something that seems to be quite benign and maybe not harmless. I mean, it's not the right word. It's certainly leaders that I work with. But I'm guessing it's sounding like that's quite different for lots of the women that you've done the research with, that it's not a kind of a benign feeling or a feeling that allows them to what to get to that point where they're, you know, going on a journey of self-improvement that actually maybe actively it holds them back. Am I right in saying that, that it's a different feeling from the experiences I've just mentioned there? Uh, to be honest, I don't know even where to begin because yes, of course, there is a difference for men and women uh, and their feelings, even treatment, even experiencing imposter syndrome from what I uh, read and from what I researched and even from what I experienced, I can confirm that. Um, and the main reason is exactly the environment that we live with, we live in. And I, again, need to say that kind of be, uh, like what are the systems that support or go against, uh, women or men growth and success. So, you know, the huge, um, difference is, um, gender biases or even some other kind of biases and stereotyping of minorities. And that influences, uh, influence imposter syndrome feelings, of course. So that's the big difference between men and women. And of course, men have another kind of barriers that actually um, blocks them uh, in a way of sharing uh, and even treating uh, this kind of imposter feelings because they are thought uh, to keep it from themselves from childhood, right? And not to talk about and not to show the feelings uh, of doubts um, because that would mean vulnerability. Oh my God, that's such a difficult English word. <laughs> um, so that's the big difference. But uh, back to the, to, the, to the even main topic, like how to work with imposter syndrome and how you work with imposter syndrome with your clients, because that was exactly the point of our last discussion when we agree with each other. Um, and I remember it very clearly because the, the post or some kind of, um, even, uh, promotion of the hard times and of some kind of mental health barriers of people are sometimes even promoted in a way like we can leverage from it and it can be the tool or a feature or something like that. And without the context, people, in my opinion, uh, are pressured or are, yeah, are motivated to, to grow despite of that. Mm -hmm. And in my opinion, that's a very wrong promotion of such a, uh, serious kind of feelings like imposter syndrome can be. Uh, so that, what, what, that, that was the reason what actually moved me when I saw, or when sometimes I see this kind of, um, headlines because Growing with the feelings or despite of the feelings of inadequacy can be, in my opinion, very dangerous in, in long term yeah. point of view. That's really interesting. There's a couple of points in there that I want to pick up on, right? That maybe I've been seeing it or I see it in the people I work with as being an intrinsic thing it comes from inside, right? I have this feeling of being this imposter. It just comes from inside. Maybe there's not much evidence out there to back it up. Whereas what you're describing is much more of the opposite, that extrinsic thing where there's the very processes and structures of society, for certain individuals, women, whoever they are, there's an extrinsic feeling that comes from outside that you shouldn't, you're not deservedly in the position you're in. That these, these you know, number one, they come from two different places. From my point of view, I would describe it as at least it doesn't help. So. Right. Yeah. Of course, it starts somewhere, but it can start as a normal and common self-doubt. And it was exactly described in the article of uh, HBR, like you start the position with some normal kind of uh, feelings of, of doubts, right? Uh, and you feel like, okay, you don't know what you are doing at the new position. Uh, and it, you know, when you feel that, okay, you have the right to be there, and you feel even the support from outside, uh, it can really help. And that's the big difference in women and men uh, and their experience, what can happen if you, happen if you create a supportive workplace environment. Uh, because, of course, it starts and it can be triggered 
by internal kind of feelings of doubting the skills and uh, etc. Et 